But how many of us have said, I want to change, and then we go right back to doing the same thing? How many of us have said we want to change, but we keep associating with the same people? How many of us have said we want to change, but yet we keep having the same mentality, the same attitude? But I want to change. First, giving honor to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, to God our Father, and to Reverend Taisha Cutberson, and to all of the officers and family and friends of the Wesley Amy Zion Church, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading can be found in Genesis, the 32nd chapter. That's Genesis, the 32nd chapter, in that 28th verse. And it reads... Your name will no longer be Jacob, 
the man told him. From now on, you'll be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Amen. I want to share today from the subject of what's your fight? What's your fight? Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for all that you have provided for us thus far. And I ask now, God, that you would come in all of your glory. Fill this vessel afresh, O oh God. Use me for your will and for your glory. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Let your will be done, O oh God. And I pray, Father, that you would open our ears and help us to listen. Open our eyes, for we want to see Jesus. And open our hearts that we might receive him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. Amen. Knowing God does not exempt us from having struggles or fights in life. Knowing God is not an excuse for us to never ever have any issues in life. When we know God, it just helps us to be able to deal with the issues and the struggles that we are having in life. People can see it in your face when you oftentimes will tell and they ask you, say, how is everything or what's going on in life? A lot of times people can see it in our face. We may not say it, but they can see it in our face or, or they can see it in our body language and they can hear it in our voice. And when they ask us what's going on, they answer, I'm going through something right now, or, or, or I'm just dealing with some things. Or we may say, nothing's wrong at all. But again, they can see it in our body language. They can see it in our face that there's something that's going on. But have you noticed that we never really get that transparent when somebody asks us, are you all right? We, we never say, I'm in the fight of my life. We never say that I'm in an intense spiritual battle. We never say that I, I don't know what to do and I don't know what's going on. We never say things like that. We simply will say that I'm going through some things right now or I'm okay, but your face is showing that we are not okay. This is when the enemy will try to convince you that no one is there for you in your time of struggle. How many times have people came to us and, and they saw something wrong with us? They saw there was something going on in our life, but we did not answer in an affirmative that there was something going on. We did not tell them in a transparent way what we were dealing with. We simply made out like everything was okay. But they could see that there was something wrong. They knew that there was something going on in our life, but we were not willing. But then when nobody was there, nobody was there in the midnight hour, we began to say, nobody cares about me. But we weren't truthful when they asked what's going on. When you tell people that you're okay, some people may feel like you're okay. It takes a friend that has been close to you for a long time. It takes a friend that has been a part of your life for a while to really see through the lies that we tell. Amen. Amen. I know somebody been where I'm talking about. Amen. I, I know somebody understands what I'm talking about. Amen. Mr. Light, I know that somebody understands what I'm talking about. Because we have all been there. You try to make look like that you were okay. You tried to make it look like that everything was fine. But people could tell that you've been crying in the midnight hour. People could tell that there, there's something going on because your body language is showing them that there's an issue. Your shoulders are no longer straight but slumped over. There's a body language that's communicating that there's an issue or a problem in my life. But the enemy will use that and have you say, nobody is there for me in my time of trouble. Nobody is there for me while I'm going through. But every one of us at some point in life will have a battle that we're facing and we will have the battle that will push us to the limits, both physically and spiritually. How do we win that fight? How do we win the fight that takes us to a place that we've never been before physically? How do we win the fight that pushes our spiritual knowledge and understanding to its breaking point? How do we win that fight? 
Well, let me share some things with you that hopefully will help us the next time that we find ourselves going through a struggle or a battle in life that we will be able to come out victorious, that we will know the fight that we are in. Again, today is what's your fight? Well, we can experience victory in life when we know who we are fighting, where we are fighting, and what changes are needed to bring victory. When we know who we're fighting, when we know where we're fighting, and when we know the changes that are needed, it will help us to bring the victory into our lives. The first thing that we need to see and understand is, who is your opponent? Who's your opponent? Now, many of us go through life never really knowing the opponent that we're fighting. Amen. Especially sometimes in a spiritual sense, we are going through but never realizing the person, the true person that we are fighting. If you look at Jacob's story, you'll find that Jacob was in a battle. It is said that a man showed up out of nowhere and began to fight with Jacob. A man showed up in the middle of the night and, and began to wrestle with him. A man showed up and started a fight with Jacob. And Jacob does what most of us do. When somebody starts a fight with us, we fight back. Amen. <laughs> ain't nobody here ever been in a fight in their life. Ain't, ain't nobody ever started with nothing with none of y'all in here. But you, some of y'all have fought back. Amen. Some of y'all have began to throw your hands up and fight back when somebody started a fight with you. But each of us has a fight or a struggle. Each of us has a fight that we're engaging in. And, and, and see, we got to understand, what knowledge do you have of the opponent? Oh, what knowledge do you have on the one who you are fighting against? Do you know the strengths and, and the weaknesses? Do you know the methods that they like to use for attacking? Do you know the keys? Keys means that there's some habits that this person may have. Amen. And when we understand, when we begin to see that our enemy may have some strengths and some weaknesses, there may be a method of attack that they use on a consistent basis, or there may be some keys or habits that they show before they do certain things. Will we understand our opponent? How many of us really know the opponent that we're fighting? And here's the key. Many of us will never acknowledge that the opponent that we're fighting sometimes is us. Understand what Jacob did. Jacob's opponent was himself. He was fighting himself, his past, his fear, his self-reliance. Uh, he was fighting with himself. Imagine you're Jacob for a moment and you go back in life and you realize you've been fighting your entire life. If you go back to the very moment that he was in the womb, Jacob was fighting even there. It says that he was holding on to the heel of his brother as his brother came out of the womb. Jacob was a fighter from day one, just like many of us. Yes, we've been a fighter from day one. Amen. If it was going to jump off, we jumped it off. If the fight was going to go down, we were there to start it. Amen. We were one that was egging it on. We were the one who was pushing people in the back and waited for it to happen. But Jacob has been fighting from the day that he left the womb. And he kept on fighting to the point that he fought and took the birthright from his brother. He was fighting for that birthright. And when he got to Laban, he was even struggling there with his father-in-law Laban. And Jacob continued to fight his entire life. So it was nothing strange that God showed up and did what Jacob knew best. And that was to have a fight over a blessing. God showed up in the middle of the night and began to wrestle with Jacob, but Jacob did not understand his opponent. But God was trying to get into the place that he had the realization that Jacob, the opponent tonight is you. You may have your hands on a man. You may have your hands on another individual, but the opponent that you're fighting tonight is you. I want you to ask yourself, who's your real opponent? Who are you really fighting? Who are you really struggling with? Some of us may come to the place of realizing that the person we're fighting is us. The fight that I've got is with me. The strongest battle that I've ever been is a battle with myself. There's something in all of us that needs to be conquered. Hallelujah. Amen. If you look within your life and ask yourself, even in this very moment, there's something in all of us that needs to be conquered. There's an attitude in us that needs to be conquered. 
There's a mentality in us that needs to be conquered. There's something in all of us that needs to be conquered. What needs to be conquered in me should be the question that you're asking yourself. What issue am I having that needs to be conquered? What fight am I having that needs to be dealt with and finally put down once and for all? What struggle am I engaging in that I've been engaging in time after time? What fight am I been going through over and over again and I have not prevailed? What struggle that I'm committing to myself over and over again that I need to get out of? Amen. And many of us are battling and we have not recognized that the opponent is us. I know we have no uh, uh, re way of, of knowing sometimes the fight that is really deep down inside of us because we don't look. We avoid looking deep within. We avoid looking at the struggle that we are really in. But we know the people sometimes. We know the outside opponents sometimes. But really sometimes the outside opponents come because of the struggle that we're having within. Sometimes the battles that we have outwardly are because of the battles that we are having inwardly. Amen. And because we're not winning that inward battle, yeah. we begin to have outward battles, outward struggles, outward fights, because the inward battle is overtaking us. We've got to learn to defeat, allow the God to conquer that thing in us that needs to be conquered so that we can move forward in life and stop struggling and fighting things on the outside. And some of us got to be careful because we want to focus the fight totally on the outside. It becomes everybody else's fault. Not me. Amen. It's not me. You know the shirt. It's not me. It's you. We like that. It's not me. It's you. We need to get a shirt to say, it's me. It's me. I know I said you, but it's me. It's me. And when we come to that place of recognizing who our opponent really is, and as God helped Jacob to come to that place that night of who he was really fighting, Jacob, your fight is not with men. Your fight is with yourself. And notice again that God said, you have been fighting with men and God and have won. The fight was with himself, but he had to learn the opponent that he was really dealing with. He had to learn the opponent that he was really facing. But the other thing that I want us to see is this, that the fight is in two arenas. The fight is in two arenas. What do you mean, Jones? The fight is in the spiritual and it's in the physical. It's a fight with divinity, and it's a fight with humanity. When we understand that my battle is a spiritual battle, because there's some things that I, as Paul said, there's some good that I would do, but the evil I keep finding myself doing, that's a fight within. Because I know what I'm supposed to do, and I desire to do what I'm supposed to do, but, but for some reason I can't do what I'm supposed to do. I want to do right, but I, I just can't seem to do right. I, I want to follow the will and the ways of God, but there's something in me that keeps me going in the wrong direction. I, I want to do the things that, that God has called me to do, but for some reason, I, I keep following what my flesh tells me to do. I keep following the path that other people are laying out. I keep following the path that the devil is trying to lead me down, but I want to do right. I want to walk with the Lord. But the evil I find myself continuing to do. When we understand that the fight is in two different arenas. There, yes, sometimes we are fighting in the spiritual and as well as in the flesh or the physical. Jacob was fighting in the spiritual and in the physical. He had a fight ahead of him with his brother because he doesn't know how his brother is going to respond. He was in a fearful fight. He was in a, a fight of, of expectation because he doesn't know what's going to happen. But he was also in that physical fight. The physical fight of now a man showing up and wrestling with him. Taking his attention off of the struggles that he was having before and now focusing on the fight that he was having with God. He was fighting with God, but he's also fighting with himself. And as Jacob finds himself in this struggle, as Jacob finds himself in this fight, and as Jacob finds himself going through this situation, struggling again, what's your fight? And he recognizes that his fight is in the physical as well as in the spiritual arena. 
We are aware of Jacob's fight with humanity from the very beginning. He's been struggling with his brother from day one, had him by the heel, coming out of the womb, continued to struggle with him. And when he found his opportunity, he said, sell me your birthright. Jacob's been struggling and Jacob goes on to live with his uncle Laban as he takes wives. And then even there, he engages in a battle with his uncle, trying to overcome the trickery that his uncle has put upon him. He's continuing to struggle with humanity all of his life. He's been fighting humanity from the womb all the way to this point. He's been fighting and struggling with a battle in humanity. But now he comes to a place where he has to also struggle in the spirit. He's also having to fight with divinity. He's made a way to come to this place. And now it's a struggle. Now it's a battle. Now he's fighting with humanity and divinity. There's been an open fight with humanity all along. But guess what? There's also been a hidden fight with God. And many of us are in that hidden fight with God. Amen. We come to church, we smile, but we're in a fight with God. We come to church and we sing, but we're in a fight with God. We, we come to church and we pray, but we're in a fight with God. We come to church and we give our tithes and off, but we're in a fight with God. I'm not in a fight with God, Jones. I, I come to church, I, I worship, I pray, but we're in a fight with God. And I know we are because none of us live the perfect life. None of us live the life the way that we ought to. None of us do everything the way that we're supposed to do. Every now and then we pick a battle with God and we choose not to do what he's asked us to do. We choose not to go where he's asked us to go. We choose not to say what he's asked us to say. We choose not to live the way he's asked us to live. We pick and fights with God. Amen. And, and because we're not going forth in that, that true battle, it's not played out in front of everybody, but it's a hidden battle with God. But every now and then, people can see. Mm -hmm. God will give them a peek behind the curtain. Amen. Yeah. You know, like they did in, in the Wiz. Amen. Not the Wizard of Oz, the Wiz. <laughs> Amen. You get a peek behind the curtain, and you see there's a, a man back there that's been running the show. It's a peek behind our lives, and they'll see that we are back there fighting God. They'll see that we're back there struggling with God. They'll see that there's a, a struggle that's going on back there that we want to do right, but for whatever reason, we just can't seem to get it together. We want to live the way he wants us to, but we can't seem to get it together. And instead of wrestling and fighting until we come to that place that God will get us straight, we continue to fight and struggle against God and try to push God away rather than embracing God. And as I said this morning, and holding on to God. But notice this. How long has God been trying to break you? Hallelujah. How long has he been trying to break you? We do our own thing in our own way, but God is saying, I need you to let that go. I, I, I need you to surrender that. I, I need you to move away from that. I need you to come clean in that area. But how long are we willing to keep fighting? It's on two areas, two arenas, the physical and the spiritual. And we're fighting in both arenas. There's a physical battle that we fight here on earth. Many of us may be fighting physical battles here on earth. We're fighting an emotional battle. There's some things that have emotionally scarred me. There's some things that I'm still dealing with from my childhood. There's some things that I'm still dealing with from past relationships. There's some emotional battles that we're fighting. Then there, there's some, some battles that we're fighting because of our attitude. Amen. Amen. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Mm. I'm right all the time. Mm. Amen. Be careful. Because our attitude can sometimes be the biggest battle and the biggest hindrance to our growth yes. and to our blessing. Yes. Because we got a, such an attitude. We got the type of attitude that even God can't deal with. Mm. He's been trying to break us. But we won't let him break us. He's been trying to break that attitude in us, but we keep holding on to that attitude. Can you imagine you having an attitude with God? Amen. But we do. We do. It can be somebody sitting in service right now that God is trying to get you to change some things, that God is trying to get you to move in a different direction. And instead of responding to God in the way that we should, I don't know who you think he's talking to. 
I run this. I wish I would go down that path. But when we give our life to him, yeah. when we fully surrender yeah. to him and he gets that brokenness in us and he begins to break that will about, he begins to break that attitude about, yeah. we can find that there's a great blessing on the other side of the breaking. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. When you think about Jacob's life, it was not until in the midst of the fight that God reached down and touched his hip and began to break him in that area. He touched his hip and began to dislocate it and put him at a disadvantage because he was struggling with God. And it said that God could not win in that moment because Jacob was wrestling with him and would not let go. And we said, well, what is it that's in me that could cause God not to win? Your will. Your will. If you don't want to give it to him, he can't take it. Now, I know for most of us, we, that's probably what we need is for God to just snatch us up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But he's not like that. It's his will that you love him. It's his will that you come to him. It's his will that he have a relationship with you. But it's, guess what? If your will keeps saying no, he won't force you. If your will keeps saying no, he won't go beyond what you desire and bless you anyway. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, he do, John. He blessed me. No, he sometimes bless you in spite of your attitude, but it's not the blessing that you could experience. Yeah. It's not the change of life that you could experience. You are not living the blessed life that you could be living because you refuse to let your will be broken. When we choose to hold on to our will and not allow the will of God to come into our life and live according to his will, we are struggling and fighting against that divine nature of God. We're struggling and fighting against the will of God. And if God can't have his way, what makes us think that we know better for us what we ought to do? But we do. God knows better. He knows the best thing for us. But yet we keep thinking we know more than him. I know we're smart. I know some of us are college educated and we had good grades in school. But you can't outsmart God. You don't know more than God. But we think we do and we think that I can hold on to my knowledge and my intellect and that will get me through. How that's been working out. Maybe we wouldn't be in some of the situations we were in if we did not rely on our own knowledge and intellect. But we trust in the Lord with all that heart and lean not to our own understanding. I don't think y'all got it when Mariah shared that on last week. We need to trust in the Lord with all of thy heart yeah. and lean not to thy own understanding. But we're so busy leaning on what we know. We're so busy leaning on what we think rather than asking God what he knows and what he thinks and asking God the way that we should go. And if we would learn to lean on the everlasting arm of the Lord, if we would learn to lean on the everlasting arms of God, he would show us a better way. He would show us a better life. But we're so busy trying to do it in our own strength and do it our own way. Don't be surprised at what you get when you do it in your own strength and in your own way. The final thing that I've seen out of the text is this. The fight is won by change. The fight is won by change. Well, Jones, I want to change. And a lot of us say that. I want to change. And we may express it to some friends. I want to change. But how many of us have said, I want to change, and then we go right back to doing the same thing? How many of us have said we want to change, but we keep associating with the same people? How many of us have said we want to change, but yet we keep having the same mentality, the same attitude? But I want to change. And we've heard people say, I want to change. We've heard people say that I need God to transform me. And we start singing that song. We go, oh, we snotting and crying. Lord, make me over. Hallelujah. God said, I've been trying. But you keep getting in the way. I've been trying, but you keep fighting me. I've been trying, but you keep objecting to every change that I want to make. Yeah. When we learn that the fight is won by change, it's when Jacob allowed God to conquer his will. When Jacob allowed God to conquer the will that was in him that was running things, the will in him that kept dictating that he operate as a trickster and a deceiver, when he began to let God change him, 
Well, when did God change him, Jones? Don't you see it in the text when it said, that, what's your name? And, and Jacob had to confess. He said, my name is Jacob. Part of changing is acknowledging who we are in the first place. It's part of changing is acknowledging where we are in the first place. What arena are we fighting in? Who are we? And when we acknowledge who we truly are and we're not hiding it anymore, but we acknowledge it. When he said, my name is Jacob, what he was declaring is, I am that trickster. I am that deceiver. I am that supplanter. I am the one who's been conniving and cunning. I am the one that's been getting over every day of my life. I am that person. When we confess that who we are, when we acknowledge who we are and where we are in life, and we began to think about that thing, and then God is saying, who are you? And we began to speak up and declare who we are. Then God says, your name is no longer Jacob, but your name is now Israel. <laughs> Hallelujah. What happened there, Jones? God changed his name. Some of us may still go by the same name, but God has changed your name. God has changed who you are. He's changed the way you walk. He's changing the way you talk. It's because you surrendered your will to his. It's because you surrendered your ways to his. And because you surrendered, there's a change that has come over you. There's a change that has happened in your life. And it's because of the change that has happened in Jacob's life that his name is changed. Amen. Jacob was a runner. But Israel is one who stands still and sees the goodness of the Lord. Jacob was running from one issue to another. Are we familiar with that? That we're running from one issue to another? He was running from his brother Esau. And he was running from his, bro uh, his uncle Laban. He was running from one issue to another. And now he's finding himself running back towards Esau from his uncle Laban. And he's running back from one issue to another. Some of us have been running all of our lives. And some of us... It's time for us to stop running. It's time for us to stop and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. It's time for us to acknowledge who we are. Yes, that used to be who I was. Yes, that used to be me, but that's not me anymore. And I remember running into one of my, my friends a long time ago, and I was in the Home Depot. And I walked up on him, and I called him by his nickname. And he calmly said, call me James. What he was saying was, that's not me anymore. Don't, 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 I don't go by that anymore. I, I go by my, my government name now. I go by the name that my mama gave me anymore because people that knew me by that name knew somebody different. People that knew me by that name knew somebody that was a, a hustler, a street person, somebody that didn't walk with the Lord. But if you call me now by my name, you call me James, that's one who walks with the Lord. That's one who's in the church now. That's one who is following God now. Call me by that name. We've got to learn that when there's a change in us, God has made the best change in us. And when there's a change in us, we got to stop running. We're not running from pillar to post anymore. We're not running from issue to issue anymore, but we're standing still and facing our issues. We see the opponent that we have and we're facing that opponent. And I realize some of the issues that I'm in today come because of me. Yeah. I realize that some of the issues I'm having today is because of my attitude, because of my mentality. I realize that some of the issues I'm having today are because I've been living a reckless life, but God has now gotten control of me, that God has now changed my life. And because there's a change that has come over me. I'm going to live by his grace now. I'm going to live by his mercy now. I'm going to live in full surrender to the Lord now. There's a change that has come over me because God has been dealing with some stuff. I've gotten transparent now and I began to acknowledge where I am. I began to acknowledge the mistakes that I made. I began to acknowledge the times that I've hurt my own life. Yes, we're talking about people hurting us, but there's nothing worse than self-hurt. When we hurt ourselves, when we take ourselves down to the depths of despair, when we put ourselves down on skids row, but there's a way out that is Jesus. There's a way out and that is hope in the Lord. And if he changes us and he transforms us and as he changes us, I don't have to run anymore. But I can stand still and fight the enemy even if it's me. I can stand still and see the opponent in me. And I know that I've got to stand still and let God have his way. Let God change me. Let God transform me. And the desires of my heart become the desires of his heart. The desires of my heart become the desires that he has for my life. All because I realized that it's a fight that's taking place. It was in the spiritual as well as the physical. There's a fight taking place. And the only way that I'm going to win is for change to come into my life. Yeah. Change has to come in order to win the fight. Jacob did not win because he wrestled with the man and wouldn't let go. 
Jacob won because he allowed himself to be broken. He allowed his will to be broken. And when God broke him in that moment, he then said, I know when he's broken, if he confesses to who he is. He says, I am Jacob. And then he says, your name is no longer Jacob, but Israel. Your name is no longer Jacob, but you are the one who I'm calling. Now you're a prevailer, one who strives with God, one who it rules with God. You are the one now that I've chosen to lead and make a new nation. It's a blessing that was on his life. And the blessing does not come until a change took place inside of him. The blessings don't come until a change takes place inside of us. But we got to start by asking the question, what's your fight? My fight may be different than yours. Every one of us in here, as I said earlier, every one of us in here has something that needs to be conquered in us. What needs to be conquered in you? Is it an attitude? Is it a heart? Is it a distrust for people? What what needs to be conquered in us? Is there a fear that needs to be conquered? What needs to be conquered in us individually? And if we just surrender and let God have his way, conquer what's in us that needs to be conquered, then we're on our way to victory because God will bring the change that is needed and necessary in our life but it starts with us understanding the fight that we're in maybe you're here today and you realize now that yes there is a battle that I've been fighting I realize now that I have not been struggling with myself I have not been struggling with others but I've been really fighting against God it's time to Surrender. It's time to give my life to Christ. It's time to give my life to the one who can make it the best that it could ever be. Is there one today who would like to surrender and give their life to Christ? Is there one today who would like to come and receive salvation? Salvation. When God comes in and changes and transforms us. When he comes in and makes us a new creature. Is there one? Is there one? Or maybe you're here today and you don't have a church home. Come, be a part of this fellowship of believers. Come and unite yourself with us here. That we might help you to grow and walk in newness of life. That we can fight with you in this battle of life. Fight with you in prayer. Fight fight with you as in supporting you as you go through the struggles of life. Is there one? Salvation church membership. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Gracious Father, we thank you. We bless you. We come, God, and we ask, even in this moment, those of us who know we're in a fight, help us to come clean, oh God, and to know who that true opponent is. And if it's us, God, help us to do the necessary things that we might overcome that struggle within that we might overcome that spiritual battle that physical battle and then father we pray that you would make the changes that are needed in us change us oh god transform us make us new father we bless you we thank you we give glory unto you in the name of jesus we pray amen thank you for tuning in today We pray that this message was a blessing to you. If it was, drop us an email at wesleyonmain at yahoo.com. That's wesleyonmain at yahoo.com to let us know how this message has touched your life. Until next time, God bless you.